Hi, my name is Eva, and today we're going to talk about um, Mandela effects and some changes I've noticed in the human skeleton recently. Specifically, we're going to talk about sesamoid bones and accessory bones, which are a new kind of bone that I have never heard of before until just a couple days ago. So like most Mandela affected people, I occasionally check the human skeleton to see what's going on. And one thing I've noticed is that it's a good idea to check both side view, back view, and other views besides front view because you find different kinds of things when you do that. So a couple days ago, I was checking out this particular image, and one thing I noticed right away was that uh, this patella bone here, the knee bone, was shown as a bone. I've never seen that shown as a part of the skeleton before. In my old timeline, I remember that as a cartilaginous cover that protected the knee. I do not remember that as a bone. So right away, I thought that was interesting. So I went and checked out an image of the knee to just see what was going on here. You can see here the patella now uh, used to be, in my memory, more down in the front of the knee, kind of protecting it. But up here, it's, it's more like a, a leverage kind of a deal. Um, and so I was reading on this, and one location said the patella is, a, is the body's largest sesamoid bone. Well, I've never heard of a sesamoid bone, so I looked into that, and believe it or not, they're all over the body. I saw this image. There's, these are all, all these little red dots are sesamoid bones. Um, they're in a, especially these ones here in most people, an sesamoid bone is a standalone bone that is not attached to the skeleton um, and forms in response to strain in the tendon. But what's interesting is some of these sesamoid bones are present in almost 100% of the population. So this is not a um, abnormal or um, sign of any kind of problem with your body. This is actually natural, which I've never heard of before. Um, this image also showed me that some of these bones are called accessory bones. Um, they look kind of similar to the sesamoid bones, but apparently they're different. Um, the only thing I could find that was different is that these are just kind of extra round pebble bones that some people have. And these ones here, the sesamoids, are formed in response to strain, and much more people have them. But otherwise, they seem fairly similar. They're standalone bones formed separately from the main skeleton, uh, usually locked in some kind of a um, muscle tissue or tendon tissue. So here we go to the wiki for sesamoid bones. In anatomy, a sesamoid bone is a bone embedded within a tendon or muscle. Often these bones form in response to strain or can be present as a normal variant. The kneecap is the largest sesamoid bone in the body. Sesamoids act like pulleys, providing a smooth surface for tendons to slide over, increasing the tendon's ability to transmute, transmit muscular forces. Um, they look like little sesamoid or like little sesame seeds, although some of them apparently are uh, quite a bit bigger than just a mere sesame seed. Um, here you can see these two are in a toe bone right here, two little ones on top of the big toe or I think they're underneath the big toe. Uh, here's an image of some in the hand. I'm going to click on this image. You can see here that um, these sesamoids right here on the uh, big thumb right at the base, 99 to 100% of people have those. And then some of these other ones drop down, like this second one here is 15 to 70% of humans have those. That's a huge wide range, you would think that they would know more specifically what percentage of population have that bone. So, I mean, after all this time, that's kind of weird, I personally think. These other bones look like they're present in a, just like a small percentage of the population, but not in a, a normal percentage. You know, 0.2 to 7%, that, that's a fair number of people who are going to have these, 0 to 1%. And that's for each one of these bones. So it kind of sounds like everybody's got a couple of these probably. All right, let's go back to the uh, main image here. Okay, here's, a, here's another example of the foot bone ones. Uh, again, 100% of people have these sesamoid bones up here in the big toe. Uh, the rest of these, a uh, lesser percentage of people 
10 to 26 percent for this one peronium and some of these are the accessory bones down in here all right let's go back all right that's uh the sesamoid bone one um, now we're going to click on the wiki for the accessory bones an accessory bone or supernumerary bone is a bone that is not normally present in the body but can be found as a variant in a significant number of people. They pose a risk of being misdiagnosed as bone fractures or radiography. Okay, this one right here is pretty interesting because this is the knee joint and this is the patella, which as mentioned is a very large sesamoid bone. And then down here, I'm gonna blow this picture up. There's a small accessory bone here, and they're calling that the fabella, which sounds a lot like a patella, except for I've never heard of a fabella. And I've noticed that this one, or more than one of them in some other animals, uh, is present in a lot of species. Uh, some places they're calling it fabelli because there's more than one. Um, and I just think it's really interesting because it's got a, uh, a name that it's, it kind of sounds like this might be something that we're going to see more of as uh, we go through continuing shifts because it's got its own cool sounding name that's really close to this one, even though it's just a tiny little useless bone that is only present in a small percentage of the population. Currently, um, I'm wondering if we might see more of this one and have it maybe take on more use in, in future shifts. Okay, so going back to the main wiki, Okay, here's some in the in the wrist, accessory bones of the wrist. All right, you see that's just a small percentage of the population has these, but these are a lot of little bones to be sitting around in the wrist. Um, that it's just so weird. I <laughs> I don't know what to say. Okay, now there's some more of the same images that were on the other wiki. Here's another of the foot bone. Now, somewhere down here, here it is. This one was really interesting. Um, apparently, these can form in other locations, including the neck. Nodules in the posterior margin of the nuchal ligament form bone tissue in approximately 11% of males and 3 to 5% in females after the third decade of life and may then be, be regarded as sesamoid bones. So they start out as accessory bones and then they become sesamoid bones. I don't really get that because I don't really understand the difference between the two clearly and I was not able to figure it out by researching. I think that's kind of interesting. There's got these really short wikis that don't tell us much about these bones and they're all over the body and apparently you can get confused and think that they're damaged bones. Okay, here's the uh, here's a couple of these accessory bones that can turn into sesamoid bones in the neck, which is pretty interesting. I, I'm just thinking that these are gonna turn into something more interesting down the line than just little pebbles in the body. Okay, and you can have them in the shoulder. Forms when any of its four ossification centers fail to fuse. Okay, so they're saying that this is a failure of fully, fu fully fusion of the bones. I've never heard of that in any place other than in the cranium where uh, skull plates fuse as we age. But apparently it's all over the body now where things can not fuse and form separate little pebbles of bone. Okay, vertebral column. I don't see an image for that, but an Oppenheimer ossicle is found in approximately 4% of individuals. It is associated with the facet joints of lumbar spines. It usually occurs as a single unilateral ossicle at the inferior articular processes but can also uh, occur at the superior articular the superior articular processes. Okay, and then they talk about that fabella, that one behind the knee. Oh, it's pretty interesting. Let's see, I think I already did this image of the oh yeah, this image of the fabella, you've already seen that. You've seen that image. Okay, so the last thing that I noticed when I was doing my searches is I wanted to see if I could obtain any of these bones. 
And interestingly, there was only one vendor that I could find on the entire internet that had sesamoid bones for sale, which I think is pretty weird because if you have any involvement in jewelry, like tribal jewelry and, and buying and selling of, of bones or, or beads or anything, you'll find that most bones that are easily obtainable from animals are available in multiple places, teeth, claws, finger bones, digits, all those things are used for jewelry. Um, so these sesamoid bones, um, I couldn't find them anywhere. There's not, I couldn't find any old tribal jewelry using sesamoid bones. I couldn't find any for sale at any of the bone sites. I couldn't even find any references. I looked on eBay. I looked on Etsy. The only person who had any of these was this one person on Etsy, and, and this is actually the uh, advertisement form, one of the pictures out of it. Um, and I bought these bones, they were only five bucks. They're not here yet, but you could pretty much see them from the uh, images here online that she had up. I'm not sure how big they are. They look like they might be, oh, you know, maybe half inch or something, which is pretty big. Now, this uh, set of bones was supposed to supposedly come from the paw region of a medium-sized dog that got hit by a car. Uh, this particular person only uses uh, salvage parts, so no animals were killed for these sesamoid bones. Uh, so anyway, I just th thought it was really strange that there's just almost no info on sesamoid bones. I really wasn't able to um, even learn much about them. The wikis are really short, yet uh, they're all over the body. Um, I didn't even know about them. This woman, actually, when I was talking to her about these, she found them in the foot. She didn't know that they were present in the knee and uh, all other, all kinds of other regions uh, in the dog. Uh, in the dog, the fabella apparently is present in, in most dogs. So uh, it's just real interesting. I, I think that we're going to see some continuing development of these bones that are not attached to the skeleton. So I suggest that everybody keep an eye out for the development of those, especially the fabella. So anyway, that's all for today. This is Eva signing off, Once Upon a Timeline.